Greetings to all my tech heads out there in the Kev Techify Nation. And if you're new here, welcome. In this episode, we're going to look at network representations and topologies. We'll be discussing network representation, topology diagrams, physical topology diagrams, and finally, logical topology diagrams. This episode is part of my series on introduction to networks. I'm Kevin here at Kev Techify. Let's get this adventure started. When we talk about network representations, we're, we're talking about these symbols that we use when we draw off. Network representations is when we're talking about how we draw our networks, typically. How do we describe our network to other people? Typically, it's through drawings. And when we have these drawings, we use symbols to identify that. In the next couple of slides, we're going to show you some commonly used network symbols to draw our diagrams. But there's one thing we need to talk about first. That is what this NIC is. A NIC is a network interface card. So this is where the network connects into your end device, connects into your PC, into your server, into your phone. It could be a physical connection. It could be a wireless connection. However, it connects in. Now, on that network interface card, there's two parts to it. There's the physical part. That's where the cable gets actually plugged into it. That's where the wireless signal gets transferred into a signal the computer can process. That's that physical port. The interface is how you go in and configure that. Now, Windows, they have a nice graphical user interface. When we get into routers and switches, we're going to actually say what interface we're going into. We're going into interface serial 001. That'll make some sense in a couple more chapters. But that's what we're doing. The network interface card has two parts to it, the physical part and the interface, the software part of it. Now, as we get going, a lot of people typically use the term port and interface interchangeably. They typically use that. I'll be guilty of that. I'll say interface, I'll say port. What I'm talking about is a lot of times those interchangeably. I'll, I'll make the best effort I can to do that. Now, one other thing to pay attention to before we leave this. When you say NIC, please don't say NIC card. You'll get laughed at in industry. Why will you do that? Let's say the acronym out and then put the word card at it. So if you would say NIC card, what are you actually saying? You're saying network interface card card. You're repeating card twice. Do yourself a favor. Don't say card at the end. These are some of the symbols I talked about when we draw our diagrams. We have the end devices, we have the intermediate devices, and we have the network media. All things we've talked about previously in this episode. But thankfully, a lot of these sort of look like what they represent. Take the desktop computer, for example. Desktop computer does look like a desktop. I mean, it, it's not a perfect representation, but it's there. Laptop, you can pretty much pick that out. Printer, IP phone. Notice it's more of a square one. They do have a traditional phone, the old dial-up, where you actually have to get into the, the cell phone company. It does look like a more chunkier, taller one. Got a wireless tablet. And of course, this being a Cisco class, we, we do look at Cisco telepresence. We mentioned that in here. So those are our end devices. Intermediary devices, we then once again, End devices is where data starts and stops. Intermediary devices is where data goes through. We do have some of these. You will probably have to commit these to memory as we get into it, but this is our wireless router here. You can think of this as an access point. It turns the signal from a wired connection into a wireless connection. LAN switches we use on our local area network to connect up lots and lots of devices to it. We also have a router here, routes between networks. We have our network media. Once again, wireless media here. What that is, is the radio signals going through the air. LAN, notice it's a straight black line. That's typically what we identify as a local area network. This is that ethernet copper. Down here, this is a WAN connection. I typically refer to it as a red lightning bolt. Different terminology, you'll need to be go in and probably memorize some of these. But as we work through this and through these episodes, you'll be more and more familiar with them. 
Now, we do have two types of network diagrams that we're going to be talking about. First one is the physical topology. This is how everything is laid out. You could think about this as like a street map. You unfold that map, you look at it, it tells you exactly where everything is. That one town is 72 miles from another town at, at a northwest direction. It gives you exactly, it, it shows you exactly distances and proportions. One town is 72 miles while another town And it shows you proportions. Now, one town is 72 miles from you. Another town is 140. It'll be twice as far. It'll show you. For networking, a physical topology shows you how the wires are ran. It'll show you that the wires are ran up the wall, across the ceiling, across the hall, down the hall, makes a left, and then into the data center, down into the data racks, and connects into the server. It will diagram all of that for you. And so when we see our, our physical topology here on this diagram, notice these are actually representing where these wires are running. And so this wire is running from here to here and notice it has locations. It says this is in rack one, shelf one. It says that this is in server room 2158, 2158. Then we look and see, oh, over here is we have a bunch of switches. These switches are all in room 2124. This, this switch three here is in rack one, shelf one. And then you can see exactly where everything is loaded, located. This is the physical map, the physical topology of it. Now, going on, the second diagram we have is the logical topology. This is how everything is grouped up together this would be maybe saying, okay, out of your town, you go and you head north and you drive 50 miles to the first town. Then after that second town, you head east and you drive 200 miles. But when you draw it, the towns look like they're the same distance apart and maybe even in the same direction. This is a logical, this, these are the step-by-step -step directions for you. Here with our logical topology, notice instead of having a room here, we have a network. So network 192.168.10.0 it is this and all of these devices are included in that network regardless of where they're located. Now, these being servers, they they were all in the server room, but now look over here. Remember these switches here? These were all in a room. All three switches were in one room, in one floor, one location. Now they're different. Now what we're seeing here is that this network has these devices, regardless of where they're located. And if we remember, this switch was in a different room than this PC. So it's not the physical diagram, but how are these logically hooked up in there? We don't necessarily care that this wire ran up the wall, down the hallway, turned, went down another hallway, into a room, and then connected into this PC. We don't care that that actually happened. What we care about is they're on the same network. And so logical, meaning basically we defined it in software on how these are connected up. We, this is our diagram. Now, as we go through these, typically we're gonna talk about logical diagrams because we're not really concerned with how that wire is ran. Maybe at some point in life, if you're designing a building, looking at setting up some equipment, you're gonna be concerned how those wires are ran. But for the most part, when you're dealing with your networks and you're designing them, you're gonna be concerned that this switch and this computer is part of this network. It was my pleasure to provide you with this wonderful episode on network representations and topologies. If you like this episode and you got value out of it, and of course, depending upon what platform you're using, please click that like button, leave a five-star rating, give me a comment. This all helps me bring you more great content. Please take a minute to subscribe to my channel. All my socials and contact information are on my website, 
kevtechify.com, and you can get all of these episodes in video and podcast form. In the upper right is my playlist for my series on introduction to networks. In the bottom right is one of my favorite videos that I linked just for you. Thank you so much for watching this episode of my series on introduction to networks. Once again, I'm Kevin. This is Kev Techify. I'll see you next time for another great adventure.